In Creo Parametric, you can use the style feature to create a special kind of curve called a radial path planar curve, which is my favorite kind of curve in style. Let's take a look at how to do that. To get into style, well, we will click on the style tool and that takes us into ISDX. By the way, I've already got a planar sketch in my model, just a regular sketch. Let's create a curve inside of style. To do that, you can click on the curve command in the ribbon. You can also right mouse click to get to it. And I'm going to create a planar curve just for contrast to show you what that is like. Let me change my active plane to the one datum plane that I have visible. Now let's turn off its display and I can change to my active plane orientation from the right mouse button. And I'm just going to create a curve. Let's just do a bunch of different left mouse clicks. Hey, there we go. That's good. Now I can hit the check mark or the middle mouse button to complete that curve. So that is a regular planar curve. Let's create another kind of planar curve, which again is the radial path planar curve. So to create that, once again, we will start the curve tool and I'm creating a planar curve, but instead of using a plane as the reference, you're going to select a curve as the reference. And you'll notice that the location of the active plane has changed. It creates essentially an internal plane, which is through the point, but normal to the curve at that point. And so there you can see how we can sketch it. And if I want to lock into the curve or any one of these curves, I will hold down the shift key and then click on the entity. And in this particular situation, I know it's hard to see, but the point is a cross. It looks like an X. That indicates that it is a fixed point because there's only one possible location that is the intersection of the curve and the active plane. And then I will do some left mouse clicks, left click here, left click here. And then to lock into this other curve that I created, once again, I will hold down the shift key and then click on the curve. And there you can see what it looks like. Let me use the middle mouse button to complete the curve. And then, oops, let's hit the middle mouse button. Then I can double click on it again if I want to do some tweaking. Say, ah, oh, let's move this point over here. Let's move this point over here. In other words, to adjust the shape the way that I want it to be. All right, so that's good for the first one. When I complete editing the feature, you'll notice that it goes back to the previous active plane. I want to create a couple more of these just to show you a few other different things. Let's start the curve tool. Again, I'm still planar. Let's activate the references collector. And I'm going to click on the curve over here. And now let's talk about locating the position of the internal plane or the radial plane, whatever you want to call it. For the radial plane, we have a drop down list and the default method is length ratio. Length ratio is going to normalize the length of the curve between zero at one end and one at the other end. So if you want it to be at the exact end, we can see that this number is almost a value of one. If I change it to a value of one, you can see how it changes to be at the end point. If I change this to a value of zero, then my radial plane goes to the other end. Let's change this back to one. And in a moment, I'll create one at a value of 0.5. Let's talk about some of these other different options in here. So instead of doing length ratio, you could use an actual length. If you knew how big your model was, hey, we could go to the length over here. Let's say I enter in a value of 750. That means that it's 750 units along the length of this curve. There's this other option in here called parameter, and this is a weird one. With parameter, if you actually look up the definition of this parameter in Creo Parametrics Help, it says, oh, it defines the location of the radial plane using the parameter. And again, it's like, hey, you're not allowed to use the word in the definition. I really don't know what this parameter means. 
And you can see that you can also offset from a given plane a certain distance. You can also lock to a point if you have one that exists. But let's go back to length ratio, change this to a value of 1, hit the enter key, and that way we have it located on the end. And where you see this empty box here, this is if you wanted to create this value as a dimension in the style feature. So even though style is freeform surface modeling, you can have dimensions anywhere where you see this checkbox available for the different dimensions. And that way, if you have this as a dimension, you can do anything that you can do to a dimension. You could use the edit dimensions command later on. You can even use this to pattern the feature. All right, so let's now create our next curve. Again, I'm going to hold down the shift key. Let's start over here. Also. Shift there. You can see where it locks in. And again, I'll just do a couple more points, hold down the shift key, and then lock into the curve. And again, you can see that we have a combination of fixed points and our free soft points. Let's hit the check mark out of this one. And for my last one, again, we can do the curve command. Let's go to the references and activate the collector and pick on the curve. And you can see how the radial plane changes. Hey, let's point, put in a value of 0.5 for the length ratio. So it's exactly halfway along. And then I can do the shift key and click here. And then again, a couple other clicks. And let's hold down the shift key and click on there. And in this particular situation, I got a point that is an empty circle because this is essentially on the same plane as that first planar curve that I created. If I hit the check mark and then double click on the curve, you'll notice that I'm able to move this along here in order to change the shape. And let's take a look at some other ed editing. We have our tangent bar, so I can grab this and use it to manipulate the shape even further. Maybe I want it to be there. Hey, for this one over on the other end, you can right click on the tangent bars and you can see all the different available choices. Let's go to vertical if I want the tangent bar straight up. And let me hit the check mark for a second. I'm gonna turn off the display of the active plane. Let's go to the operations overflow menu and then let's go to preferences and turn off the display of the grid Hey, when it's not working for you turn off its display all right so that's good for that one and again you can double click on the various different curves and say hey let's select the tangent bar over here and maybe i want this one to be horizontal this one over here maybe i want this to be vertical and of course if you had other geometry in your model you could do things like make it tangent or curvature continuous to those other different entities. And also with your tangent bar, let's go to the tangent tab on the dashboard. You can also manipulate the length of the tangent bar. So how long do you want it to stay vertical in here in order to get the shape that you want? All right, let's hit the check mark over there. I made that one kind of ugly, but that's okay. Let's take a look at another thing that you can do with these radial path planar curves. So I'm going to select this curve over here. Then we can go to the curve drop down menu and we can choose to copy it. And so right now you'll see that here I've got this curve CF20, the next one that is being created. And then I can hit the check mark. And so now we have two curves on top of one another. Okay, so here we have the curve, this CF20, the copy that we made. Let's now go to the curve overflow menu and choose the move command. And you have this thing called the jack over here. And initially, if I grab this and move it, we're actually changing the shape of the curve in the plane. That's not what I want. Let's cancel out of there. Now let's go back to the move command and I want to direct your attention to the message area. So it says select curves to move, drag to move, and you can shift to snap and alt 
for normal. Use the Alt key for normal. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and then grab this. And you'll notice now we've got the curve moving along the reference. And that way we can end up using this to create another additional curve in our model. Hey, here we've got our references tab. And again, we're just doing the move operation here in order to get it where we want it to be. Let's hit the check mark. And so now I have a bunch of curves created. And where I end up using these radial path planar curves the most is when I am working on surfaces and I use them a lot as the internal curves. Let's take a look at creating a surface using these different curves. So I will hold down the right mouse button to get to the surface command. A little quicker way of getting to it than going to the ribbon. And now I'm going to select the curves that I want to use. So I will select this as my first curve. Let me show you the references tab. And again, when you're creating a surface in ISDX, you're going around the loop in terms of selecting your references. It's a little different than creating a boundary blend in standard mode where you select curves in one direction and then curves in a second direction. So now I'm going to hold down the control key and let's pick another boundary. And then I'm holding down control and selecting this curve over here. And you'll notice that right now it's using the entire length of the curve. I can still hold down the control key and select this other different entity, but be aware that if you wanted to, you could drag this so that you're not using the entire length of the curve. And as you're dragging this handle, if you hold down the shift key, you can snap into different entities. You'll notice that we have this little diamond over here indicating that for this one by one chain, we're only using this particular portion that is snapping into the intersection with this other curve. All right, so I've got three of my chains. Let's hold down the control key and pick this other one. And there you can see the shape of the surface that is created. And it's not using those other two radial path planar curves. In order to get them to use it, I need to activate the internal curves collector. And you can do that by clicking here in the dashboard. You can also click here in the tab. And you can also use your right mouse button to bring up the pop-up menu and then activate the internal collector. And now I'm going to select this curve. You can see how the surface updates in order to use it. Let's hold down the control key and select the one that I copied and moved. And that way we are getting the surface to use those additional curves. Let's hit the check mark and you can see the resulting surface. And once again, one of the nice things about ISDX is that when you make changes to the underlying entities, they're going to update in real time. So for example, as I move that particular point, it's going to update the curve and also update the surface at the same time. So there's sort of like a simultaneous regeneration that's happening. The different entities are updating dynamically as opposed to if you're doing this in standard mode, it would depend on the order of the entities that you have in the model tree. So that's good for that one. And let's select say double click on this particular curve as well. I grab the different points and the surface is going to update. So again, very artistic way of working on this and Always another good thing to show and remind people is you can use this button on the in graphics toolbar to display the four pane view and you can grab the middle in here to resize the individual panes. And if you want to go back to the single pane view, just click on the icon again. But once again, that is how you can use the radial path planar curves in order to create geometry within the style feature. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.